What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 10 of the Ask a Creator Economist podcast. I'm joined here today by only Thomas. Jonas could not make it, could not be here on the pod. Thomas, thank you for joining me. Sure. Thanks thing. for being here. Yeah. Um, so we actually have some pretty cool product news to talk about really quick. We don't want to bore you guys too much. Um, we want to get straight to the questions that we do have on this episode, but um, I'm going to pass it to Thomas real quick. Uh, why don't you let us know, Thomas, about some of the uh, the new happenings on the Unify side of things? Sure. So I guess one topic that many of our users ask us is like, how can we make their workflows easier? How can we save them some time? And something that we are currently rolling out step by step is different importers from platforms because some of you only want to use Unify to put exclusive content there, but others also would love to have content from their established channels coming there. So uh, just this week, we finally rolled out the Spotify import a feature that allows you to take your podcasts from uh, Spotify and republish them automatically. It, that even works with the new video feature, which is pretty, pretty cool, I must say. So video podcasts, audio comes in the platform and we are already working on the next, on the next social media tools to be added. So stay tuned for more of those. But I think that's a really neat feature, something that, of course, Unify, Unify should have and now it finally has it yeah i just want to say like as somebody who does do like a lot of content publishing naturally for us here at liquidity team i will say like one one of the most stressful things as a marketer as a as just a content producer in general um it's like creating a piece of content and then having to publish it promote it share it on every platform that you have um because that's reach right like you want to reach the most amount of people that's the best way to do it and I think having just having tools that can help you automate that. And I know there's a lot of like social media schedulers and stuff where you can link most of your social accounts or whatever other, or maybe even like a CRM that you use, or you can do something similar like HubSpot. Um, you know, those things can be pricey, can be difficult to manage. They're very vast and expansive, a lot of these CRMs. And I think um, like, what, what, you know, what we're building at Unify, it, it's it's a place where you can send all of your premium content or publish premium content, but you can also send, you know, a lot of your existing stuff. And we're trying to make it as seamless as possible. I think that's just going to be so nice. It's already been so nice just having the Spotify importer for us here. Yeah, so, definitely. Um, definitely. Yeah. So... Hey, without making that too, too advertising, but yeah. if you want to support us and our work that we do over here, give Unify a try, head on to over to Unify.io. It's Unify with two Ys, so U-N-Y-F-Y dot I-O and give it a try. All plans that we have come with a 30-day free trial, so no risk attached. And of course, it helps us a great deal if you work with it, if you want to build your premium content platform, your premium community and, and all this, then give it a try. And yeah. with that said, should we move to the to the first question one? Yeah, let's get in into it. Um, so our first question comes from Julia. Julia, thank you for your message. Uh, and here is her question. Hi, Ace Team. I run an Instagram account where I share my experience with hospice care at home. My father has gotten very sick about a year ago and I take care of him. I try to be diligent and scientific in my posts, but Instagram is maybe the wrong place to do this. I currently have around... 150,000 followers, but I feel the platform is reaching its limits for me. Now I consider developing my own community to exchange with others in a similar position. Also, I'd love to earn some money with it so that I can create more content. Um, I'm hoping you can help me with some questions I have. And she listed four questions here. So what are some effective ways to build a community website or forum that is engaging and fosters meaningful discussions around this topic? Now, Thomas, do you want to handle each of these one by one and, re and introduce the questions as we go? Or should I keep reading all the questions? I think maybe go through all the questions first. I think we okay. can tie some of this together. All right. How can I attract members to my community? And what are some strategies for keeping them engaged and active in the community? And are there specific features or tools that I should consider for my community website, such as chat rooms, blogs, or event calendars, that would be particularly useful for a community focused on caring for elderly parents? How can I monetize my community without coming across as too salesy or pushy while still being able to cover the costs of running the community? Thanks in advance for your insights and advice. She is a nurse by trade, but currently not working. That's a nice little tidbit of information that could be helpful in our answers, actually. Um, her main channels are her Instagram, 
Uh, and her topic, as I mentioned, she caring for sick parents. So it's kind of like a, I would say, a micro niche within hospice care. Um, in German, we call it like, what is it called? Flager? Yeah. Flager something? Altenpflege. Altenpflege, yeah. It basically means just uh, elderly care. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so she's got a nice little micro niche there within it where it's specifically taking care of your parents, living with your parents or elderly and taking care of them in your own home. So I think that's a, a nice topic. I think you're doing great work. You're doing the Lord's work. And Thomas, why don't you go ahead and take it away and, and give Julia some uh, some advice, maybe address that first question. Yeah, I mean, first of all, Julia, it's uh, of course really sad to hear that your father is sick, and I hope he gets he gets better. And uh, yeah, like like Ron said, that is really uh, it's a noble undertaking. It's something that must be really intense. So so we feel you, and I think the, even that you decided to share this, it's a topic maybe many people do it and they they don't talk about it. But it's also maybe hard to find relatable information. Uh, or even just like, like learn from others so that that you do it i think is i guess very helpful to people who are in this situation luckily my parents they are they are still in good shape so so i'm not there but of course sometimes even i i think about what will happen once they once they get out on top like my my parents divorced when i was young and and so i now essentially have have four grandparents on my side the same for my wife so maybe we have to have a big big house at some point if we want to do this no but that is that, that is really a topic and yeah i guess I, I would have been curious to hear a bit more from Julia about like the the limits of the platforms on Instagram that she sees, but I can I can of course imagine what she is talking about. I, I lately had some conversations with a with a creator in with a very different topic, but but like also something that goes deep and and is on Instagram. And what I what I heard there in these conversations is just that that like if you want to do more meaningful content, then stuff like SEO is not as good. And if you really do like a, a meaningful write up, then you have like in the captions you have limits of how many characters you can put in there. I don't know if you know it. The top of head run, I think it's. 2200 characters per caption so you cannot do in-depth stuff so so yeah if you have an audience on, on instagram then at some point there might be a way where, where especially in those topics that are that are not like just a fashion and not just visually appealing where it makes sense to to go the next step and i and I also quite like the notion that you already think in terms of building a building a community because I can imagine that that is super super useful. Most people who have parents, I, I, I guess the the fact or run you sometimes in the past referred to it as the unfair advantage that you have in terms of a creator is of course the fact that you have this this background as a nurse, so so you know what you are doing, and and. That even when it comes to to what you are doing is a big advantage over most people in the situation who decide to take care of their parents at home because because at this point or if you're not a medical professional you have just no clue what you are doing and then co connecting people and building those bonds to me um, makes makes a lot of sense and can be very helpful and uh, that that is why I also tend to believe that you can create a real value proposition to use a business term here but but really create something that people will find useful and that is the basis to also build a business on top of it or, or earn some money with it so that you can as you put it focus on creating more more content and i assume more quality content that you want to provide so let's go through your questions a bit effective ways to to building such a community website or, or forum that is engaging and creates meaningful discussion well there, there is of course a technique component to it you also specifically ask about tools so th there we will give you a very brief answer check out unify because unify really has all the toolkit in one neat package that you need to have content premium content to have interactions with your community so i think you came to the to the right place in terms of in terms of tools and when it comes to building this community then the first thing that that 
comes to my mind, especially in the in the topic that you are that you are addressing, is try to build a place where people, unlike on social media, where you filter out the hate, where you create a good culture of discussion that is that is that is how do you say this in English? Empathic, empathetic, yeah. empathic, empathetic, empathetic. Oh, all right, yeah. sorry. Um, so, and where people support each other, and and I would assume that that is also your goal. And sometimes what you get on on social media is a lot of a lot of hate and and uh, like discussions that are driven by by almost politics by personal convictions and it can be spiteful and i think if you want to create something that feels good and that helps people who are going through this then i think that is the first thing so almost like a community guideline and and also being very present as as a host setting the tone making sure people people support each other and of course you can have like the discussions on topics where people disagree about about advice regarding um regarding certain techniques in, in elderly care and so on in these discussions i guess you need to of course allow and and moderate super well but the the community hygiene if you want to find the terminology um that is really the critical point i believe but maybe ron you have different thoughts on these on the effective ways to build a community no i mean i think you're spot on with the uh like the empathetic approach but i will say like from from the small like there's a couple of channels that i do follow that are kind of in a similar niche um i follow a guy on tiktok whose dad has dementia and his dad now lives with him um and he just you know records some of the experiences some of the some of the mornings that he has with him some of the the times where his dad gets confused and it's very like raw it's and he's like simply just showing how he deals with his dad and how you know uh, how to cope and all that kind of stuff and typically the comments are, are very uplifting very supportive it's uh um yeah I, I don't tend to see that too much so so maybe it's different in the yeah um but in terms of like building and building a community i guess one of the things that i could say is you still you're still going to want to leverage like bigger social media platforms to find more people and find reach you already have a pretty considerable amount of followers coming from instagram 150k in a niche like that i think must be pretty good but my only advice is um bringing them to your premium community is the goal but you still want to keep fishing where the fish are right so if there's other platforms like tiktok like um you know maybe even facebook maybe you have an older demographic on facebook where something like this might work well um you know you might want to fish there and see if you can get new users there and then it becomes just a a community building thing right so you create incentives to get people to come to your community to your platform and engage um but yeah do, do you want to get into some of those incentive things that you could create that I'm one could create I mean, yeah, we can we can definitely get into into these in a second. Just the the one zooming one level out and big picture. How would I set up this community place, and what are some kind of the things that I think you need to provide to to have coming back to the term value proposition that is attractive? Is you already mentioned that you want to that you create content and i think there are two types that you can provide so one is really like the the quality advice given that you are a nurse leverage the know-how that you have in in dealing with sick people and and give people the adv advice of course within the the legal limits i guess if you have an account like this you are aware that you of course cannot give medical advice on your own platform but of course there is non-medical advice just uh, uh, things you can talk about and within these these legal ramifications make sure that you share your now how have probably premium articles or if you want to go into video creation maybe do this and then also the fact that you are going through this right now also means that on a personal level as a community host you can be super relatable and and 
you are authentic. You're not somebody who wants to build a business, but you go through this yourself. You want to help. And so if you, depending on how far you, you want to, to go, you mentioned this TikTok account before, and I think that is a, that is a great example. Also make it personal, th this entire community. Be there as a host, share your story, your experiences. And then I think that is a good value proposition. And the third layer, when it comes to the, to the community side there, I think, especially together with the question about how can you build something that, that earns money, maybe you can, maybe you can, um, collect questions from the community and spend some time on really giving, um, researched answers to those as one possible approach or take or t even ask others in the community to share their stories and give more visibility to the stories of others it's something like i mentioned before it's a lonely task that you usually do and not something that you that, that many people tend to talk a lot about and and here you can really create an outlet for for people who can discuss the the experiences they make and and this as as a bundle can be quite attractive and yeah like Ron said then there is the topic of how can you incentivize people to to jump on and maybe you want to chime in here um real quick though i just want to go back just a little or or add my thoughts on the idea of like maybe maybe if you're a little confused on what to offer on this platform so before we even get to the incentive part, um, I wanted to like break down like products into like four categories, essentially. Um, now you can offer educational content, right? So let's just say on your platform or even just on Instagram as an influencer in general, you can, you can offer several things where you can offer educational content, which is like, and, and when you, when you think about educational content, you can break that down to so many different sub niches, right? So it's like, educating people on how to stay healthy while while caring for their their sickly parents educating people on how to cope mentally with it so there's a bunch of different niches within the educational product uh pillar right or segment and then uh, another one which you see a lot in like the fitness industry accountability right so people are willing to pay for premium groups or premium communities if it's something like accountability right i mean Everybody knows you got to eat less calories, go to the gym, and you'll lose weight. But they get coaches, they they join programs because they want to be held accountable. So they're kind of that's like the the real thing that they're paying for. Then you have support, right? So this is another one where people who just are looking for a friend, for a friendly face, for another person they can interact with, they're stressed from dealing from taking care of their parents, and they just need other people they can bounce. Uh, ideas off of or vent to that can be something that you offer and you, you you make that very clear that that's what people can get from your group and then the last one obviously physical products there's probably much more many more pillars i just think those are like four that might apply to you um and maybe on the educational side you know as thomas said you can't really give uh hard advice you can't give scientific advice because of you know just legal reasons but you could give like uh advice on how to how people can cope you know, how, how people can like be more productive, structure their day better, time management, um, all, all that types of stuff, which doesn't breach any of that kind of stuff. So uh, on, you know, taking that now a step forward when it comes to incentives, um, ben, depending on each of those pillars that you do choose, there's different types of content that get people to engage, right? Now, if your goal is to convert a lot of those 150,000 followers you already have on Instagram, it's as simple as, hey, there's a article or there's a video where I talk about tips for people with, you know, with elderly. Um, you can get that by going to, to my platform and just and to get it, all you have to do is register and sign up. Right. So there's tons of different user acquisition strategies. That's one of them. That's like the, the least intrusive one where you're not trading money for access or anything like that. I think that's a good way to start. Uh, but essentially view it the way a marketer would view any type of funnel, right? So at the top of the funnel, you have your most accessible stuff, your most broad, most e easy to convert stuff. Um, and as you go further down the funnel, you can make it a lot more premium. And um, that's where you can potentially monetize, right? As people go further down the funnel. Um, but yeah, that, those are my thoughts. Maybe I, uh, 
it took us a couple steps back, but I just wanted to to throw that out there. Those pillar product pillars. Yeah, I think I think that is super useful as a as a framework to think yeah. about it. And then within this, to to follow up on our advice to you jump on unify so what can you do specifically on on unify so one thing that you can offer and i think that is the most basic thing is a subscription or call it a membership in the community so something where people pay you a monthly amount to get access to for instance all the content to to ask direct questions and whatever you want to throw in there and then depending on your on your time i guess it's also limited because you have to take care of your dad right now but something that you could layer on there is like a premium membership type and this you could represent with an access pass so because your time is limited you will not be able to give like personal advice maybe jump on video calls or so with 200 people or so but here the the tool and nft non-fungible token you don't need to understand the technology but it's just a thing that you can create in a limited number of times say five times you can take five people on who get access to have personal conversations with you who can ask you direct questions it's almost like a, almost the notion of a of a self-help group comes to mind where you, they, maybe they can even uh, uh, interact amongst e each other and for this you could you could sell individual nfts and as long as uh, uh, th they need it or as for, for a certain amount of time this will give them access and only one uh, uh, one person um, left this membership status or after the time period is over you can then uh, put on another one for sale and these can of course be more like the the premium memberships in the in the community just because you don't have the time right to to like with subscriptions they scale super well and and because it's mostly focused around content that you create once and it's only the same it's the same work right if you have like one million subscribers or one subscriber but it, once you personalize this almost go into the coaching realm then it becomes different and at this point i think uh, nfts are a great like access gate or a great product to have in your community yeah definitely so let's yeah, jump maybe in the second part of the question it's a long question you put out there julia but <laughs> uh, we picked it anyways because because we found it quite interesting as a as a topic and maybe it changes also a bit the the vibe from other questions we had recently so the the next part is where you ask about attracting members um and keeping them engaged and active and i think we pretty much covered the the part about how to to get them to your community but then how can you keep them active and coming back well i think the the one part is it, it comes with the with the value proposition that you lay out there if you help them to cope with this tough situation i think it is definitely a good basis because they they then will come back but maybe you also want people who who went through it themselves to to uh, continue after they no longer take care of their parents hopefully because they they are healthy again but maybe maybe not because of this and and here i think something that you see in many forum based communities so the the old school way of doing things is that people in the community they become they often have like a role system right where people get a rank in the forum community and they can even become like a moderator and get like th this type of role in this and that is something you can you can easily introduce and adapt and you can you can even use our nft feature to create badges of course then you don't sell them but you award great contributions to your community with a with a community award that people can then put on their user profile they in their user generated content they can also use it and there are these types of almost think of it like a badger system maybe you have played around with the two like duolingo to learn a language very often these gamified solutions have have this type of feature set around badges or awards and you can introduce something like this to your 
community very very easily and yeah why not even find the people who are really active involve them into making the community a nice place because it's never a, a one woman show to build a community you need the people who are active who, who contribute to commit time who share their stories their advice and that is the general setup that i would use for for make keeping people active and and engaged and then of course cool. one very basic simple truth sorry one just okay. finishing this one thought is like you yourself need to be very responsive right once people realize that they get feedback that that there is a, a way to not only talk but also to be listened to and then get get feedback and and quality feedback at this this will also greatly will be greatly appreciated yeah i just wanted to <clears throat> like further drive home the point that you said and the, the second to last point of that um no no uh, what did you say no community is a one woman show or whatever yeah um i think that's so incredibly true just when you think about like the biggest community based platforms it's user generated content that has propelled them into Reddit is a user-generated content platform. Facebook, user-generated content, MySpace. These platforms are built on the premise that we invite users. Users create content and populate the platform with content. And then we monetize, right? That, that, that's their business model. So without sounding too crude, I will just say that like user-generated content should and and I think, you know, it's a good idea if it's if it's your if it's your top strategy where um as thomas said you want to get people to engage you want to get people to share their stories because i i would imagine that with elderly care um no no strategy is a one size fit all right everybody has their own issues their own problems their own hurdles it can be financial struggles it could be personality behavioral struggles but one thing that everybody does share is that they want they want friends they want to be listened to they want some community to be a part of to make that the USP of your community make that the thing don't you don't even need to like teach or or talk you know talk from from an authority place like when you first submit this question I was like ah you're an ex nurse like that's a that's your USP that's your unfair advantage but I think creating a communal place that people can can share and vent to each other might even be a stronger USP Yeah. Um, yeah and and i think if you if you merge the two it's merge really them. great yeah. right because you can it's a community around your trusted voice julia yes and and that is what makes it what makes it valuable right it's not just yeah. a bunch of people in a spot and they talk amongst each other and but instead you know there is one person who who really is a reliable that's of course my assumption that you are but if if you are then that is the <laughs> yeah were you fired from being is that why you're no longer in <laughs> yeah so anyway yeah yeah so certainly this and then the tools we already talked about yeah. i think unify is a great solution for your purposes and monetizing it we already touched upon this as well maybe specifically about the not too salesy or pushy part well i i, I assume that's hard to that teach right it it's hard to teach and it's also easy to teach i believe because you have this established community and if you just transparently talk to your established community because that is the first audience that you will be addressing and that is where your first customers will come from then just be open and upfront about your motivation like you are in your email here julia right you say i want to create more more content and maybe you can explain a bit more why you think that that instagram is not the right or not the only place for you to do this or it's not the toolkit maybe that you are looking for to build what you want to build and then of course that involves work and most people will understand this that is why the entire creator economy as we refer to it here on the podcast came up initially it is because people love the work that some people do and they are willing to pay for it if they 
can support this work to be continued or even to to see more of this type of of work and get more and i think that is that is a matter of communicating t with your audience and explaining why you do this and then of course assume there will be some pushback everything you do on social media will always get some pushback or most things you do will get some pushback and that is that is clear but as long as you really clearly outline hey that is the value that i want to provide over here with my own community and these are the reasons why i do it i think it will be easily understandable yeah i just want to quick give like a very brief anecdote before we move before we wrap up uh, julia's question or or our answer to julia's question um we we rec we've been doing a lot of like calls with creators in in recent times um and at the beginning when i first started doing these calls i used to have like a very like pre pre-packaged pre-templated approach where i knew like my talking points i knew exactly what i wanted to say um and it felt very salesy right like for it, it just felt like there's one person trying to to sell something to another person um i've since you know getting to know these creators a lot more my my tone, my demeanor, everything has changed where it's like, wait, th these are people, you know, these are people just like us. These are other creators. Um, they've got they've got challenges. They, they're, they're in love. They're passionate about their work. Like, why don't I just try to get to know them and the work they're doing and the stuff they're, they're doing? And it's been it's been awesome. And, and it just, just to echo what Thomas said, like, um, it is easy to learn, but it's hard to unlearn bad habits where it's like I'm making a sale. Right. Or I, I'm trying to sell someone on a, And this could be an idea. It could be a, an ideology you have. Anytime you're trying to persuade some, somebody of something, um, the less combative you are, the less hostile, the less aggressive, less assertive you are, the more likely you're willing to win them over. There's a great book if you want to read it on. on it's called, um, oh, damn, I don't remember the exact name, but it's How to Make Friends and Win People Over, I believe is the name. Author, I don't know, but I will put it in the show notes. Great book. It's it's essentially just on the art of persuasion. Um, and yeah, maybe that'll help you a little on how not to be salesy and pushy. And for anyone listening, not just for Julia, if you are trying to learn how to be just Thomas, you got the name of it? I, I think so. The one that uh, here Brave Search spat out is how to win friends and influence people. Yes, exactly. By, Great by book Dale for Carnegie. From yes, 1956. So it's yes. a classic. And this applies to not just business, but personal life as well. Um, it's just a great book on how to how to get people to adopt your ideas and like you. Um, and that, you know, that can apply to business as well. So just a small little note. And Julia, thank you for your question. I hope that helps. Hope it helps anyone else with uh, similar issues or similar challenges. And uh, let's move on to question two. Yeah, Thomas? Yeah, let's do so. Good luck, Julia, for everything you do. Yep. Our question two comes from Mike. Mike. Hi, I came across Unify recently, and I find it quite interesting. However, I struggle with the idea of NFTs and how to use them. For background, I have a small YouTube channel about classic cars and could see using Unify to create a premium offer around mechanic device. I think many of my subs would benefit from that, but do NFTs make sense in that context? He's a YouTuber and a car mechanic, so they're his... Uh, that's his role and his gig. Um, obviously, he uses YouTube. Old timer is his genre. Um, Mike, so you want to use Unify. You're interested in Unify. You have a special interest in NFTs. I think um, that can be an interesting place for you to start. I'm going to pass this on, but before I do, I just want to give a couple of my initial thoughts on it. So when it comes to NFTs, as we mentioned in the last question with Julia, Think of NFTs like um, a type of digital access pass. That's the way that we like to think about them and in the way that we like to use them, right? So if you want to teach people how to maintain and repair and fix classic cars, one way to do that is to provide for them a premium community or a premium space or the opportunity to um, ask you direct questions right? or get direct access to you. And you can do this by selling or offering an NFT, which is essentially just an access pass. And as long as they own said access pass, they are given that access to you, right? It could be like a bi-weekly thing where you meet with them. So that's the way that we like to use NFTs. Now, 
in the industry, there's a lot of other companies, a lot of other entities and brands that use NFTs in much different ways. They use them for lump sum, you know, money grabs and stuff like that. While all of that is possible, that is not something that we would necessarily recommend. Um, <clears throat> but those are just my initial thoughts. Like, use NFTs as at, for what the technology provides. The tech is sound. The tech is that you can give unique digital items to people that can be traded, sent, received. They can be shown off in Unify in the platform. People can have them as you know stickers, as badges, as Thomas mentioned. That's essentially what the utility of an NFT is. That's like the the main benefit of what they do. You know, bad actors come in and use them for bad ways, but that's how we like to use it. Thomas, I'll just go ahead and pass it to you before I ramble anymore. No, but I, I think you're pretty much spot on. There are probably a few layers that I would like to add. So like you said, the, the, essentially you can create unique or, or limited edition digital goods and products. And like these are, th that is just a type of property besides the fact that it's really owned by the people buying it. Unlike for instance, a skin in a game who is just, it's just a usage license. And if the game is no longer, then also the, the skin is no longer. And that is different with NFTs, but the, the scarcity plus the fact that people can really own it, plus that it can also be transferred and used in different applications. These are just the three core properties that allow you to build with this. So, so forget most of the stuff you've read about NFTs, especially when it comes to like six-figure valuations and so on, because I think that is not the the substance much as Ron said behind it and that is not what you should do rather think about if you want to create something for to to provide people advice on on repairing working on their old timers then i believe then i believe you have a really cool toolkit to go premium and and offer something and the one notion that Ron put is like we think about it like this nfts are the technology that allows you to build various digital products and these digital products can have various shapes and they can also be hybrids between these shapes one is an access pass so you can create uh, one nft or multiple nfts and say if you have this nft you get access to special content or to special interactions you know we have voting features ask me anything features crowd ideation features special forums and so much more we have an event feature coming up soon by the way so so and all this can be access to this can be gated by whether or not somebody has an nft so to make this super concrete to your case one approach that you could be taking is say you give mechanic advice on different cars and these of course old cars may, between like an old Volkswagen and an old Ford the, the, these are very different um, th these cars and maybe you need to give very specific advice about I'm not a car expert I'm definitely not a car mechanic I just got my driver's license uh, late last year so so uh, that is not my wheelhouse it is yours but like assuming you want to you want to change a brake with these old cars uh, uh, like advanced hobbyist mechanics can probably still do it with new cars they can't but but it's very different so you need to create a, a special content for each type of car so what could you do with nfts you could create an nft themed by a certain car model or maybe a series of cars if they are similar and you could say hey if you buy this of course you cannot use the brand name and so on but maybe have a cool illustration that pretty much looks like the car it should represent and then you're you're you fine from a copyright perspective and and sell this to people and what it is is the access to all these types of contents and then uh, you do this for for type three type four car and that of course makes sense and you can also see where's the demand for content where's the willingness to to pay where should you focus on with your content creation that is one way to put the access pass metaphor into action that's, Another that's really real quick thomas that's a really cool idea of doing it like based on the the, the company but you can also do like you, you can start to get creative with that you can do like regional right like Japanese, Japanese old timers, then you don't, you don't, you know, kind of surpass that copyright. I don't know. You could do um, low riders, right? You could do 
convertibles. You, you can do all types of different categories. I think that's a, a super cool little segmentation idea. Yeah. So, so that is that is one way. So the se the second thing, of course, is the the digital collectible notion that especially in markets like sports you see it here because of copyrights and so on if you don't have the right licenses you're limited in terms of what you can actually do once again because you cannot just take the full cars and turn them into collectibles but maybe maybe there is still a fun way using like spare parts or whatnot where you can create this that is not my favorite idea but it just conveys okay you can also have people collect something and this what it can what you can also do with this you don't even have to have to sell nfts because for with Unify, it is super easy to just give them out as a reward or an automated reward to your to your fans and followers. So, so one simple example: you could have a certain content or an interaction. Say you do a voting, and everybody who participates gets an NFT, and you could have this cool little collection of spare parts for famous cars, and that is just something in the community that makes people come back, going also back to Julia's question about how to do this, that would you be your play on an, on an award or badge system in, the, in your community. Thomas. Go ahead. I, I have to get this idea off my chest. I'm Go. sorry. Go. So check this out, or think about this. You find a skeleton of an oldie, right, or of an old timer. A skeleton. It's just a body. It's missing. It's missing everything but you know, but the bumper. You create a, a collection of NFTs, each one correlating to a specific part that is needed for that car. You set the price for whatever the price of that part would would cost, and you create like a a high profile, high stakes, you know, premium price NFT collection where the community crowdsources the the repairing and the bringing back to life of this old timer. Ooh. And that person then like they own, you know, the transmission or whatever, the gear cool. box. So, so it's a crowdfunded Crowds collaborative build, build up project. Yeah. Ooh, that's nice. And then everybody who actually owns one of these one of these I got the muffler. Get, gets to p get p ride the car on a community event and and so on and so forth yeah, yeah definitely and yeah. i mean and I, and i mean depending on your community and also how you want to how you want to play it of course you can also include sponsors so if you have relationships in the in the industry and people uh, uh, who who are focused and brands who are focused on old timers and cars maybe you can even work with them to create something that is that is really cool and engaging to your to your fans yeah now, i'm sure if you did do that where you could essentially say hey um our sponsors are actually covering all the parts and all the money is going to charity the PR points you'd get from that through the roof, through the roof. Yeah, definitely. Anyway, yeah. And, and then of course, another, another notion for what you can build with NFTs is also something like tickets. So I don't know if your community is spread all over the world or if there is, if there are also local hubs, so you can also just uh, uh, create NFTs that give access to like events that you do with your community um and so on so there is yeah it, you could it, do you could do like a cars and coffee post event meetup where everyone who owns subscription or the nft can come to the uh post cars and coffee meetup yeah something for, yeah. for instance and so it's essentially a, a white design space and one that you can use to create products you sell but also something to create a, a, a fun little feature within your community where people can collect where where brands and partners can give them out as a sponsor present them as a sponsor so many cool ways how you can leverage non-fungible token technology in in your context and i think that pretty much covers my question what do you think yeah, yeah, I think so. Um a lot of the stuff that we've covered in not only this episode but other episodes can apply to you, Mike, um, community building, audience growth, very, very common themes that we get here on the podcast. So if those are some things you're interested, maybe you can find some other nuggets in some prior episodes. But Mike, I hope that helps. 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to question three. And it comes from Spencer. So Spencer said, I run a small e-commerce brand and have been using my personal brand as the engine driving sales. It's actually a, a very great place to start, Spencer. You had a huge advantage. So I want to start advertising on Facebook to enter a growth stage. Do you have any tips on how to get started? I have it all set up, but not sure where to start with finding my audience and running the ads. Thanks. He's an owner of an e-commerce brand. He typically uses Instagram and Facebook. Those are his main uh, uh, channels. And his genre is office items, gamer setup stuff, and man cave memorabilia. Okay, okay. so I can already picture his demographic because it is myself. <laughs> I'll probably follow you on Instagram, Spencer. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and take this one away. I'm going to start this. And uh, I had a, I jotted down a couple of talking points. I'm going to try to go through them one by one because I think when it comes to advertising, so paying for attention, paying for reviews, paying for reach, paying for traffic, whatever it is, um, the most important element that you have to, to make sure you have is product market fit, right? And you have to make sure that your product is actually intended for the persona that you think it is for. <laughs> forgot how to speak English there for a sec. Um, you need to make sure that you have a buyer persona that your product speaks to or that you're, that that persona would want and actually want and is actually interested in. And um, you need to literally write down, like, his name is Ron. He's, tw you know, between the ages of, of 12 to 30. I don't know. Maybe gamers are much older than that or, or man cave sports enthusiasts are even much older now. He's from 12 to 50. He, um, he has a neck beard, slightly out of shape. He has this much disposable income. He lives typically in the, this region, this region, this region. You need to create a persona. You can create a couple of personas that apply to a couple of segments. I, I think that is critical. You, you, yeah. It's not like a can, it's you should. Because if, yeah. you are, if you're right, and I think your hunch is quite correct, that really goes from gamer stuff that is more uh, uh, the age of my brother, so so 20, yeah. even younger, up to like like this memorabilia stuff, yeah. much older. So if different Wealthy personas. dudes with man caves who have like a basement with, you know. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. and you need, especially for, for social media advertising, where you want to be specific, your, your persona, because you can target so finely, and I guess you will cover this in, in a minute, but yeah. definitely create multiple personas so you can fine tune each ad campaign to, to the persona. That yeah. is a big mistake that many companies back in my consulting days made. They had like super broad ranging personas and or their target audience definition was everybody, but that is just not targetable. It doesn't work. So, so really create them ideally, if you have it based on data, like the better your existing data about, about clients or, or the addressable market is the better. But if you don't have it, then maybe use methods in design thinking. They use a bunch of methodologies to help you create personas that are not on the quantitative data, but on the qualitative data gathering part. So, so talk to a few existing clients during the persona development you, you could do surveys and, and stuff like this to, to get more data. But even if you just have it on your team, a bunch of people who are also in your audience, then at the very least use them to come up with these personas and check out the methodology uh, is that, that are out there. It's something you can easily Google. Yeah. yeah so for Spencer, because uh, Spencer, you didn't tell us if you have like a team, if you have enterprise clients, if you do wholesale, you didn't tell us any of that stuff. So I'm just going to assume you're maybe like a one or two person shop. You're using your, your influencer clout to make sales and you have a little e-commerce brand, maybe a Shopify store set up or something. Um, in that case, you know, you could use already like existing sales to help you narrow down what your persona is based on some of the products you're already selling. So that's a good way. Like you kind of, you're already making sales. So you're kind of working, um, you know, a couple steps ahead. But, you know, for the sake of anyone else listening to this, that maybe it really doesn't have a persona. Maybe they're just, they just have a blog where they, they write about man caves or, or memorabilia and stuff like that, or office, you know, gaming setups. Um, and they don't have products. They don't know what to sell. That's a good place to start. Start to narrow down exactly who you'd like to sell to. Now, if you don't really have a structured set of personas, 
you could create personas that you would like to sell to, that you want to sell to. Maybe it's, as we mentioned, 30-year-old plus established, you know, career-driven dudes who own their own homes and ha have a basement and a man cave already. Like, I don't know exactly how deep you can go on Facebook advertising now, uh, today, but I know you could kind of sneakily, you know, f do those types of things. I know like home ownership is one that you could, you could sneakily get to, but, but basically make sure that the, the persona you have is clear enough where you could utilize Facebook's existing demographic search to target them and to narrow them down. Um, and then that brings us to the next point, which is audience. So creating an audience. Facebook has a bunch of different options, but essentially I'll start from the top. The most, the, the most direct way is you upload a list, right? So if you already have an e-commerce shop set up, when people make sales, maybe they sign up with their email. That's already an existing list. So your existing customers is always a fantastic place to get started when it comes to advertising, because I think the chance that you can make a sale to a, a previous customer is much higher than making a sale to a new customer. So reactivate some of your existing customers to see if they're interested in stuff that they've already purchased. Um, so that's a good place to start. Upload a list, use it. And you can also use web traffic. So if you have everything set up and you have your pixel set up with Facebook advertising, you could use some of the web traffic that, that comes from your website to create an audience in Facebook. So based on like, the pages that they visit and stuff like that. You can then create audiences that match those demographics. And um, next one is retargeting. So basically, again, very similar to web traffic. It's like people who have been to your website can then be targeted on Facebook. It's kind of crazy. Like it's, it's, it's so intuitive now the way that Facebook advertising works and just advertising in general. Uh, if they've added items to their cart on your, on your site, if they haven't made a purchase, that is somebody that can be targeted on Facebook. If they followed you on Instagram, they can also be targeted. So those are some of the retargeting uh, things you can do. You can also create a lookalike audience. So that's when you already have ex existing audiences on Facebook or even an uploaded list or whatever it is. You can create a lookalike audience where Facebook will then create a similar list to the list you have, but just expand the reach and expand some of the interests slightly by a couple of like percentage points. So that's another thing. And then there's good old just manual demographics. This is where I typically like to start, where I'm just going to manually create a, a, a list based on the interest demographics behaviors of my persona, of the person that I'm targeting. This is the most like fresh and, and you know, start from zero approach that I like to start with just to see like the, because then Facebook will give you like a little nice UI that shows you an estimate of how many people potentially exist that match those demographics. It's a good way to, you know, it's think of it like a sliding scale. We're like, all right, um, my current persona, that's too many people. It's too broad. I need to narrow it down. Back in the day, the sweet spot was like, you want your custom audience to be somewhere from like um, three, 250K to like 1.5 million people. And that's typically like a good place to start on, a, on, on most niches. I don't know what it is now, but yeah. That's that's one strategy. Thomas, you got something to add on there? No, n not really. I okay. think you covered pretty well how you can how you can create the construction there. I I mean, much like you, I haven't checked the the ad manager in Facebook in the last year or so. But it yeah. used to be possible to even target people based on specific uh, Facebook pages they liked. I don't know if that is still available, but they at least can yep. go very deep down on like these interest categories and so on. And I guess that makes it like a very sweet tool for, for you. And then of course, all the demographic uh, targeting options from like just target the countries where you can actually uh, uh, fulfill and ship to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, so just think like literally if you have the persona, all of this is really easy. If you create the persona in a very modular way, it's all super easy to just match one for one, you know, based on what Facebook has. Um, and the next thing, the next point that I've that I that I jotted down here is creative. So the actual creative of your ads is important. Um, we won't spend too much time lingering on this because it's very subjective based on the industry, based on the niche. But I will say that gaming is one where you want it to be clean, you want it to be and I wrote here amateur video, which basically means like someone real using the products, not like a like a very adsy, like like 
high production quality ad with perfect lighting. It's like, yo, check out the, you know, check out this, uh, this mic stand that I got, like, it's sick. Like I, I set it up a lot of like review type stuff works really well where you literally create like a review of your product, have that be like a video ad. That stuff tends to work pretty well. Just real people. Also tone. If like, I think gamers, sports fans, some type of like humorous tone can work pretty well. This is all stuff that I think the overall thing that I want to say is that no matter what you do with these ads, you always want to track and then you want to test, track and test, track and test, publish, track, iterate, test, just keep doing that over and over until you find winning stuff. You want to start with like pretty uh, moderate budgets to begin with. And when you see that something is start to, starting to work, where the conversion rates, the cost per acquisition is in the realm of what you're comfortable with or what you can afford, or maybe there's an industry standard that you can find that applies to your industry. Um, once you get around that level, scale it, pump more money into it, it then becomes a black box that you can just pump infinite money into. Yeah. And assuming your margins are good, you can just do that endlessly. And, and, yeah. and do your campaigns on Facebook, you can choose between CPM and CPC, of course, because you have like a direct conversion business, do CPC. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And then ideally yeah. you can even find out like which, which segments and which ads perform so well that you are buying revenue. Yeah. That is what you would usually do. Depending on the size of your organization, you can have a more proper analytics setup already in place or not, but that is certainly where you want to get to, right? You want to understand what is the, the average order or even CLV. If you, if you have many returning customers of a customer you get, and then you can just uh, find find the segments that work well for you and scale from there. And assuming that your brand is established, which you say you've been using your personal brand to drive sales, I think your CLV might be pretty nice. It's a good place to start. People like your brand, they're willing to be repeat customers. So again, you're, you're, it's a nice first world problem that you have here, Spencer. Just uh, look, up some, look up some other resources on Facebook advertising. I know Facebook themselves have a really good I think it's called like Facebook Blueprint or something like that, where they have really good resources for Facebook advertising. So um, yeah, Spencer, I hope that helps you, man. Good luck with your business. Thomas, is that a wrap? That's a wrap. All right. It's a wrap with a W or, or with an R? We, we covered this, haven't we? Yeah, we, we once covered it, but w whatever wrap you want. So. All right. All right. Well, guys, <laughs> thanks for joining us on this episode. Jonah should be back on the next one. Um, if you guys did like the podcast, please give it a like, a share, a subscribe on whatever platform you use. If there's a rating, give it a rating, five stars. If you don't give it five stars, thumbs up if sad. it's the YouTube. Yes. And uh, for every person that likes it, I will personally, um, I'll personally like something that you've published somewhere on one of your social platforms. Wow. That's not a promise, but <laughs> I'll try my best. So it sounds good. Yep. We'll see you guys next week then.